Hello, welcome to the University of Law. This is a really long overdue video. Um, I was, throughout last year, I was um, reviewing each issue of Liberation of the Daleks. I got as far as part nine. I carried on reading them with each passing month, but I just didn't do the reviews. I think um, I was very busy over the summer and a lot of the videos piled up. If you remember, I did a big bulk um, review video of all the big finishes in one of my videos last autumn and now I'm basically doing a bulk review to catch up with the final parts of uh, Liberation of the Daleks. So this, this is the uh, 60th anniversary edition of the magazine I believe. Is this the one that came out in November? Uh, I can't remember now but this is the issue that had the final part of liberation of the Dark. This isn't the 60th, this is the 60th. Oh, um, I'm, I'm getting confused with the other big anniversary, which was the um, 600th issue of um, Doctor Who um, magazine. Is there any clue on the side? No. Anyway, so if I. Oh, there's some great feature in Doctor, Doctor Magazine. Of course, this is lovely behind his feature in this particular issue of Tales of the Tardis and bringing that back. Um, but we're here to talk about uh, Liberation of the Daleks. So, um, I think it's safe to say there's going to be spoilers in this video. Um, it's been several months since these issues came out. Um, I'm basically just going to talk about the whole series, really. I really enjoyed Liberation of the Daleks. I thought it was really well paced, lots of twists and turns. It didn't feel at any point like it was filler. Um, the energy kept going. It kept there was lots of cliffhangers that were very much in in the vein of the kind of either the Daleks, proud the Daleks cliffhangers, where it wasn't so much a moment of jeopardy but a moment of revelation or a massive twist. There's quite a few of those which completely changed perception. I think there was an awful lot of that kind, a little bit like with the Dream Crabs, a kind of because you have lots of lots of these kind of cartoon realities. There was a lot of you know this almost the subtext there about the um, about what it is to be real. Um, and whether things appear real or how much of a threat are they and you know if you're in a cartoon world can you be um, destroyed it was very interesting lots of that almost philosophical subtext there um, which it, it, it was nice because it was there and it fueled the story but it um, didn't end up becoming like a boring um, paper on um the nature of existence but there was kind of it was that subtext that really powered the story in a really enjoyable and fulfilling way um the biggest reason why i loved it though i think you can kind of see from here is just the absolute mishmash of dalek i'm a massive dalek fan and the daleks being the doctor's greatest enemy let's face it they are they've been there since the second story this was a celebration not only of the 14th doctor who's our 60th anniversary doctor but also looking at the rich history of the daleks both in comics with the Dalek emperor on television you know we've got uh, television daleks here but riding the trans solar discs that have been seen in the comic strips and since they've been seen in big finish um and to an extent there was a version of it, wasn't there, in Day of the Doctor. But this was a really lovely mishmash of just Dalek heaven. Um, I think especially off the back of the Dalek comic strip compilation they released a couple of years ago, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed, which was a reprint of the original 60s strips. It was nice to then get this. It was almost like a sequel to those um, beautifully illustrated colours that pop. I mean, this... I just love the aesthetic of it. it. It was very 60s, you know, the popping aesthetic of it. As I say, lots of twists and turns, lots of larger than life characters. It, it, it did the kind of thing that you can only do in a comic strip, which I think is wonderful. If you're going to do a comic strip, do stuff that you can't do on television. And this did that. I mean, you know, you, you couldn't have had these characters realistically done um, on, on television. Um, so, you know, I really enjoyed it and of course it ends with um a bit of a tease that um he doesn't want to go to scaro and of course we know that one of his next stops is of course scaro and at the time we were led to believe that this was going to bridge the gap between um power of the doctor and the first 60th special and to an extent it did but the first 60th special was in fact the children in need um episode operation was it operation scaro and no, a destination scaro wasn't it um which I also really enjoyed, and you can catch that review on the channel. So, yeah, for me, I, th I think, yeah, the big takeaways were lovely artwork. It did stuff you just can't do on television. It was just, it was lovely, darling. So if you're a fan of that, of, of 60s sci-fi, really, of 60s comic strips, 
um, which the Daleks, for me, the Daleks are at their best on their own in Dalek comic strips. Um, and I, I, and I, that's why I really enjoyed the Dalek animated series on YouTube back in the early 2020s, part of Tom Lovett's I know not everyone was a fan, but I loved it. It just had that aesthetic to me, that 60s sci-fi. But what did you think? Did you enjoy um, Liberation of the Daleks? Do let me know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I look forward to speaking to you soon.